Let's count the rams quickly. We have the numbers, then we know what we are yes. Can we? Why is my interview? Or we finished with this. Live now. That is what we want to take to our farms in Uganda. And uh, so first, what we're still doing the selection. Because we want to take the best. We are it takes quite uh, quite some time to do the selection. <laughs> here you can see the length from from the floor from the ground up to the tummy that means it can carry a baby to full term and it can give us a very good healthy lamb uh, we have left out a few animals and uh, 170 animals here on the farm we have left out just a few those elements cannot, uh, cannot, uh, we cannot fail to, uh, to take, we cannot fail to uh, to stay. But those are just a few animals. Just like we are human beings, they are those extremely good animals with uh, very good uh, traits. And then others don't have that kind of traits. Maybe they are still young. And yet we want to take to our farmers uh, animals that are ready to mate, animals that are ready to live back. And that's a big love of this. In the examination, most of them are about to give birth. And uh, some of them, as soon as we take them to Uganda, some of them will be ready, be ready to go and feed and be mated with the other females. Let's select the let's check the males. Mm, okay. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. We are selecting our sheep. And uh, some of the other stock he has. These are specifically on uh, zero grazing. And that is a recent import from South Africa. You can see the picture. And then the other side, those are some of his uh, ewes, the female ewes, ewes are female sheep. And then the rams, the rams are also here. And we have done our selection from here. Others have gone to graze. We are still doing the selection and we are planning to travel any time from now to take this ship to Uganda. We always want the best for us. Some of you watching me may wonder why specifically doper sheep. The advantages about this doper sheep, one, they mature quite fast as compared to our local sheep. So if you are to, if you are to cross breed them with our local sheep, I, I for one have tried it at my farm. I've done the cross breeding between the local and the doper sheep. The magic, the product is always magnificent and they grow very fast. They add on weight. They are heavy animals. They are not heavy feeders per se, but they grow fat very fast. You can imagine those of you watching me, I don't know how old you think this animal is. This animal is not yet even nine months, but you can see it is already showing potential to be a very fat animal. All you have to do on your farm when this goat, uh, sorry, when this sheep arrive, I'm so used to goats, but when the sheep arrive on your farm, all you have to do, ensure you deworm them, you give them adequate feed, you give them adequate water, fresh, clean water, 
and the multivit multivitamins. Basically, we are trying to remove or reduce the stress that you, that could have been uh, they may have gotten while on their travel from Keep Current to Uganda. This is what we are on right now. What is the question? What's the question? How complicated is it to transfer animals from Uganda, for example, to Tanzania? What are the measures to consider to transfer the goats to Tanzania? Uh, it's not so complicated. I've uh, taken goats to Tanzania a number of times, but usually some of the, the smallest complications usually happen on your side, on the Tanzanian border, and you guys have to rectify it with your government because what you have to understand the animals are living things that any delay on your part, especially at the border point, these goats or these sheep, they always they are always stressed. And when you get a stressed animal, you put it on your farm, it usually falls sick or it may it may die away. So you should talk to your government to rectify the issue, the paperwork, especially the paperwork on the border side. You can say that our officials. They know exactly what it means to transport an animal from point A to point B. Usually, even when we are reaching at the border, any border, they always give our animals utmost importance. Not because we are from Boji farms, but all animals, be it dogs, pigs, sheep, cows, everything, they will give them the first priority over anything else because they know it is a living thing which has been constrained and any time it may, it may die or it may fall sick. May God continue blessing you. Thank you so much. Any other questions you have for me? Let's continue. Let's continue with our life. So right now, we are going to count the sheep so far we have gotten. But our target, these are the people. Our target are 150 sheep. We are going to talk to Uganda. So we are cross-checking to see if we are not taking less numbers. Yes. So this is exactly what we are doing. Kibo is, has a very huge team. All these are huge team, 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 All these people you are seeing. We are counting. We are counting. We are counting. We are counting. Yeah, we are counting. Isaac himself is doing the work. Uh, haven't you missed a number? As Isaac is counting, some of you may wonder why are they purely white? The color usually is dictated by the kind of uh, by the kind of housing you have. Like you have seen in his house, his house it is only raised a little bit, but the other side. The, the sheep are always outside here when it is not raining. So this is bare ground. That is the kind of color. But when we take them to Uganda, remember most of you are going to keep them on free range. Mama. Yes. Okay. 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 Thank you, Kasibante Abdu, for the comment. So when you see, when you see the house here. The house here, this is a zero grazing unit. We are going to show you what they feed on. And uh, they fear rain so much. Some of them have even disappeared off. Yeah, we are still doing the stock taking to see if we are going to get the exact number of what we have counted. And uh, these are all his feeds. You can see how we covered them up. These are all his feet. You can see how he's covered them up. Yeah, and these are some of our young rams. We are going to do the stock taking as well. These are young rams. Yeah, we want rams which are young, not so old, that a farmer can keep at least for a minimum of two years and be able to exchange with other farmers. Actually, the magic about this shipment, we have all the people in our data list and what we are going to do we have all the districts where these sheep are going to so time comes when we would want to exchange our rams between ourselves we shall simply yeah we want it hey bring it that is a very beautiful shape mm. we want it which one 
Come on, put. Come on, put. Yeah, go spray. Yeah, film. Yeah, okay, yeah, spray. Yeah, yeah, green. I think. Three more. Eh, we still have three more. Eh, okay. Eh, if we can get at least a uh, hundred, uh, hundred of them. Eh. Uh, this is one other selection. This is a female. This is a female. A young cousin. A young cousin. Ah, uh, some of you are asking, where is the market internally? Look at this beautiful sheep. Where is the market internally? For example, if you are talking about the Ugandan market, the market in Uganda is hidden. It's just like I always tell you, it's like inner beauty. What do I mean by inner beauty? Originally, when Ugandans were being brought up, most of us we don't eat uh, mutton in our in our places. We consider mutton like something which uh, most farmers don't want to associate with. But what is quite amazing. Because of the dwindling, uh, the, dindo, the dwindling numbers of goats happening in Uganda and the, the increase of the population in Uganda, uh, people are opting to eat mutton because it is, red, it is readily available. Some of you are going to wonder, we do not even have, uh, we do not even have, uh, how they call them, we don't have butchers for mutton meat, for mutton, but the mutton always goes, the market is always there. Okay. The market is always there, and we are also looking at markets like uh, South Sudan. We are looking at uh, markets in uh, markets in uh, Dubai. People always want this sheep, but all you have to do is keep quality sheep, keep the numbers, and don't keep the sheep for so long. Every time you keep an animal for so long, the meat grows so hard. It becomes. Uh, it becomes. It's not tasty when it's so hard, and our market wants meat which is. Uh, which is soft, so keep them young, keep them young, keep them young always, and, uh, and uh, what else, what else have I forgotten? So uh, what we need to, what we need about our market as farmers, we also need to organize ourselves. We organize ourselves as a group. Usually I get people calling me. They want a certain number of sheep. They want a certain ton of uh, matter. But I cannot fulfill it as a single, single handedly because I don't have the right data and I don't have farmers organized to pull, pull, to pull this off. But trust me, the market for sheep is there. And when you look at our, our population that is increasing day in and out, if I would you not eat the mutton meat, somebody younger than me will eat mutton meat. The time I went to South Africa, I enjoyed mutton meat more than I could even eat goat's meat because it was really tasty. And for some of you who go to Gayaza Road, when you want to eat goat's meat, most of the meat you eat there is mutton actually. Some of you are going to say we have never eaten mutton, we don't eat mutton in Uganda. No, the market, the sheep is always there. Uh, where is the question? How much? How much? Where is it? How much, the, how much is the sheep? Uh, the rams, we are bringing them for 700,000 UGX, and uh, females, we are bringing them for 550. Yeah, it's a little bit, uh, uh, it's a little bit high. Reason being, the transportation, the lab tests, all that cost something. That's why it is costing that much. Great job, Madam Grace. Thank you so much. You should visit me anytime. Uh, Kahindi Jennifer, thank you so much for the comment. I mean, uh, Mina Musa, thanks. I really appreciate. Yeah, right now we are in Keep Karen. We are at Kiboys Breeders. And here, this is the only farm we are getting from our ship. And if this, uh, this is uh, going to be our third or fourth consignment, and if the shipment goes on well, we plan in the next two to three months, we plan to bring to come back and pick more sheep. This guy really has some good quality sheep. I don't know if you have seen some of them already yet, but uh, when you look at this, I always consider the height. Look at the height of this sheep. So if it is put on free range, it will easily adapt, and this is a male. So this male, if you have a local sheep that do not, are not long, remember the length of the sheep matters. Every time it is long, it means it has muscle, it has a frame to put on a muscle. All you have to do is to do your work well. Feed it well, give it enough water, deworm it, 
uh, spray again as far as I like ticks, don't leave it wet. And also something you, thought, you should also remember about this sheep, they are low maintenance. They don't require a lot of money to maintain them. They are also, these are sheep that you can take uh, months and months without treating, except in a few incidences where they have a little bit of flu and cough, maybe eye infections. But these eye infections, all you have to do is call a, a vet and then you, he guides you in exactly what to do. Any other questions? Um, thanks for the knowledge you keep imparting on us as a Tanzanian. I'd like to know the price of hybrid goats in Uganda. Uh, hybrid goats, I don't know the exchange rate for Tanzanian shillings, but we always sell them at 500,000 500, uh, UGX. And uh, our starter mills go for 1 million Ugandan shillings. All you have to do is get an app to translate for you to, to change, to exchange for you the rate. Yeah. Another question. What have you done to integrate imported uh, animals to your farm? Basically, when we are taking these animals to our farm, all we have to do, we are not going to take them and mix them with the red animals there. We are going to quarantine them. We have a quarantine. It is roughly 700 meters away from our main herds. So what we are going to do, when we reach there, much as this farmer has given us evidence that uh, he has dewormed these goats, he has vaccinated, we are going to redo the exercise for our own sanity. We have had incidences where I have been to other farms. Somebody lies to you and tells you have vaccinated against uh, pox, sheep pox. You reach the farm after the goat, the sheep are still in the quarantine, like two to, two, two to three weeks, they have full-blown pox. So to avoid all those challenges, we are going to keep this ship into one place, a quarantine. We do our, we spray against the ticks. We look out for any deformities that may have come during the journey, like maybe a limb. And we also examine the udders to check that there is no udder that is, uh, that is blocked so that the udders can be able to breastfeed our lambs. And we are also going to ensure that we 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 tag them because these are new sheep we don't want people stealing them if, especially when you tag you see most of them are not tagged we are going to tag them for record keeping purposes and uh, the time for the farmers to pick them each will be able to find his or her name on the particular sheep you have comments uh which comments yeah. why are you not having long where are they tails like other sheep okay this sheep isaac where are you Okay, these sheep, they have tails, but in Kenya here, they cut off the, t the, sh the tails. Why? Because of the germs that may accumulate, or the infections that may accumulate under the tail, especially if the sheep has a tail. So we are trying to cut off the infections that may happen. Remember, every time it has a big tail, it, uh, it is moist under, it is moist under. And also, something I also learned from South Africa, the reason that's why they cut off the tails, to ease mating of the male and the female. Every time there is, remember some of our sheep, especially the local sheep, they have a bigger tail. So every time it is big, it makes it hard for a male sheep or a ram to mate with a female because it is an obstruction here. But majorly it is because of the infections and also to control, I think it's called a boat fly. Boat flies usually hide under and they enter into the internal organs of the of the sheep. Any other question? Oh, Why? Uh, I'm here with. You're here waiting for me. Eh? In so, yeah, you're in Chankwans. Yeah, our stopover is going to be in Kampala majorly, and then the other sheep we are taking them to to Raka direct. There are those farmers we have been bringing for sheep, and they know exactly what we do. They know how to quarantine those as are going to get their sheep in Kampala, and we are going to direct them and also show them exactly what they are going to do, and then. They will take their sheep. But those who are new on this consignment, we are going to quarantine the sheep first for them so that they don't have any challenges. Remember, here in Kenya, it is very cold. That's why you're seeing most of these sheep have a lot of hair on them. But in Uganda, it is a dry season right now. So we need them to acclimatize, to get used to the environment from the cold weather to the dry weather the other side. You can see they have a lot of... Uh, Hairs. It is because we are getting them from a cold environment. So all these our farmers need to know and know why they are like this. And when they reach Uganda, after a month or two, 
all these layers are going to start peeling off. These are things you should know, and we always teach all our farmers on our uh, WhatsApp group. Another question, can you deliver goods to Tanzania? Yeah, we always deliver, but not in Tanzania, because uh, Tanzania is a little bit, uh, it's a little bit complicated, but what we usually consider, we always uh, provide transport up to Mutukula border. We have some few guys who help, who help us take the goats in, uh, taking the goats to, taking the goats to Tanzania, but uh, you always pay him, pay them some kind of money. You understand, I'm, I, I'm not free to talk this on air, but Tanzanian said is always complicated, but we always find a way on how we can give you the goats in Mutukula so that you can continue with your journey to Tanzania. Hmm. What is that? Thanks, Madam Grace. Mm -hmm. for, thank you, Madam Grace, for the great work you do. May the Lord bless you. Safe journey. Thank you, Andrew, for the feedback. I meant imported sheep. Do you feed them the same food? Yeah, the same food, what they are feeding them here, is what we are feeding them in Uganda. What is so surprising, most of the feed, we are going to interact with Isa, most of the feeds they are feeding here, we, they get them from Uganda. They buy them from Uganda, the maize, the, the cotton seed cake, everything, all everything they get them from Uganda. So the feeds are not di different, but for us, that majority of us are considering our goods on a, on a free range, whereas these people are zero grazing because they have a limited piece of land. Any other question there? What is there? Mm. Where how are much you? Is, how much is so uh -huh. Which question? Are they born without tails? God, it's my first time to see. No, they are born with tails, but we cut them. I've just mentioned in my previous remark that they cut off their tails to ease mating to ease mating between the male and the female. That is one. Two, also there are infections that hide under the tail. Every time they hide under the tail, they cause havoc. Like the boat flies. They hide because it is moist. And these boat flies are always found in sheep. And they hide either in the nose because it is moist and also under the tail. So that's the reason to cut them. But also my other breeder in South Africa, what he told me, why they cut them off, remember every time that tail consumes a lot of, actually in Uganda, most people love the tail to eat the tail because it has a lot of fat. But why they cut it off? So that the, the fat can evenly be distributed. The, the fat that would have gone in the tail can be evenly distributed to the whole body. That's why they cut it off. It's just like in your banana plantation, you have around uh, five suckers on one stool. You cut three of them so that you leave the other three. There is no serious competition for nutrients. So here, there is competition for the supply on the body of fat. So when you cut off the tail, it means that the fat that would have gone in the tail goes in the other part of the body. <laughs> Mm. Okay, which um, other question do you have? Um, how much is a male sheep? A uh, male, we are costing them 700 all the way from here up to Uganda, 700,000 uh, UGX. Uh -huh. Where are you buy, buy, buying this sheep from? We are getting them from Keep Karen at a uh, farm called Kiboys Breeders. Mm. What are you supposed to cut? What are you supposed to cut the tails and what treatment? Okay, I think he's asking what tool do you use. So what we use to cut the tails? One, we have uh, okay. Uh, there are several methods one can use. Originally, at my farm, when you look on my uh, I think Facebook, I've showed videos where farmers, my, my boys get a flat, a, a hot iron, like a, a panga. They put it in fire, it gets really, really hot, and then they get the tail, and then they cut it off. When you cut it off, it means all the blood will not spill away. It is some instant pain, and the blood will not go away. But others, they are rubbers on the market. They are used for castration, but these rubbers, especially if the, the, the sheep is still young, the lamb, you can still tie them here on the tail, and then after a week or two, the tail will fall off. Those are the two methods I know. Uh, hi, do you deliver to Guinea? No, I cannot. I don't have the capacity to deliver there. Does sheep have market in Uganda? This is the second time somebody is asking me, so where did she go? See? Yes, the market is there, but that market is hidden. And is, the onus is on you as a farmer 
to find the market for the sheep. The market is there. People eat sheep. There is no butcher for sheep in Uganda. But the sheep, me, I sell my sheep at the farm two to three times a year. But all my sheep always goes. The Muslim community love the sheep. The expatriates in Uganda, they love our sheep. We have the Sudanese, they eat this sheep. Just try, if you adapt, you give there is no market in Uganda. Try and take your sheep to places like Senyi, Kalere, and you see if you will not come back with money. That is how easy it is. And uh, most of you, the kind of meat you eat, because the, our goat population is dwindling day and night. Why? Majority of Ugandans, all farmers, Ugandan farmers, have failed to migrate from subsistence way of keeping animals to the commercial way of keeping animals. So our numbers are few. And those who are keeping big numbers, they are not keeping quality goats. They're only aiming at having so many animals with no meat on them. So what is happening? There is a discrepancy between the demand and supply. So what we, we don't have what to supply to the market. And the market wants meat. So what our brokers are doing, instead they are supplying you meat from the sheep, the mutton, and you eat it as goat's meat, as simple as that. Hope I've answered the question of market. At what age are you supposed to cut off? At what age are you supposed to cut off the tails? It would be best if you cut off those tails when they are still, uh, I think, uh, three to four months. That is the best time. Uh, thank you, thank very, you much. very much. I will be checking on Keep Current to buy some. Thank you so much, Wilbur Force. Isaac here is a very good farmer. I'm quite impressed by his farm. He has one of the best well-planned simple farm and is using locally available materials to grow either come here and greet our farmers they have so many questions for you we are we are thank live you. by the way oh we are live. You better uh, put on your you. best smile thank you we are all wearing black <laughs> i so tell this you this is isaac thank you very let much let the questions begin we eat mutton yes uh they want us to turn yes okay. all right has it reduced as uh, you Okay. Okay. No worries. We eat mutton. You know, Uganda. Yes. People are asking. Yes. Where is the market here in uh, in Kenya for sheep? Thank you. Yeah. I, I'll I'll bring it on a bigger picture. Mm. The market for sheep is huge now because uh, one, uh, the population of goats has dropped a bit, and the population is increasing. Um, the human population is increasing. You know, we are fifty four million in Kenya mm. right now. Mm. Ten years ago, we were talking of thirty eight million. All those mouths have to be fed. We do not have enough cows to feed. And the easiest animal to raise is uh, the sheep. And not just the sheep. There's a demand for dopa sheep. Uh, Merino sheep, Hampshire down, and Coriodale. Because those are animals that can gain weight within a short time. In fact, there's a term that we normally say that they gain twice the weight at half the time. Wow, that's good. That's a good one, eh? Compared to the normal animals mm. oh thank you someone is saying check ek hey, farm ek is farm Evans. is my yeah, Evans. Eva, in fact Evans, he was in the papers Evans, yesterday Evans, Evans, he's, he's someone we partner together yeah, i know him so they gain twice the weight at half the time compared to the normal breeds and so if you're going to keep the ship you're going oh. to go to the market within nine months and by nine months they gain 10 kilos a month Granted, you have good quality breeds, so they gain 10 kilos a month. By the nine month, you're talking of 75 on the lower side to 80 kilos of sheep. Okay. So with that, normally it's half, half of that is, uh, the rest is ovals, but the real meat that you're going to sell is half, which would be that seven kilos. In, in Kenya, you say that seven times 600 shillings, and that is where you make your money. So even if you're going to focus on quality breeds just for the mutton market, you're going to, to score very big. Mm -hmm. but, but the other big thing that has happened in Kenya, and I, I would say East Africa in general, is that the Middle East, there's a huge, huge demand for livestock from East Africa. Something else we are forgetting, that also the population of the sheep and the animals was affected in Kenya because of the drought. Talk about that. Be thank you very much. Yeah. So the population, for example, when we, 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 we normally get from our farmers, uh, we, we, from, and my farm here, we have 200 animals. We also partner with, uh, someone I've talked about EK Farm. Mm. We also partner with EK Farm. There are several, uh, there are a number of outgrowers, and to get animals for you guys in Uganda, 
has been a challenge. It's not easy. The prices have gone up. One, of course, there's the issue of inflation. The cost of feeds has gone up. Transport has gone up. And we lost a huge, huge percentage, close to 45% of the population of livestock in Kenya because of the drought that was there. And recently, again, with the heavy rains, came a lot of um, parasites, particularly uh, the internal, the homongas. And it has really affected a lot of sheep around. With most of the lambs that we were expecting to grow for the market in uh, September this year, most farmers, the ones that didn't have, uh, didn't, didn't know how to manage, lost a lot of them. So right now, the demand is high, but the supply is very, very low. Okay. Dwindling supplies, and that is where we have a challenge. But uh, all that said, I think the focus should always be on quality goods. You'd better have 10 yeah. of the best than have 100 that are 10 kilos each. And, uh, speaking of quality, how yes. have you been able to manage such quality sheep on your farm? What, what is the magic? Thank you very Ugandan much. farmers need to know this. Thank you. Mm. The, magic, the magic with such quality sheep, for example, to get here, mm. this guy, mm. at one year, four months, mm. you can see you took How much so that is, eh? Yes, mm. 80, ki 80 kilos and above. So to get here, you need a quality ram. So the magic is quality, quality breeding stock. Invest in a ram above everything else. Mm. Then get some good quality ewes that can then improve the genetics in the farm. Mm. So the offsprings that, the, the, that we get at the farm right now are high because we import our rams from South, rams Africa. from South Africa. And we don't just go to any farm in South Africa. Mm. We go to the leading breeders, the world-class breeders. Mm. Those are the guys that we go for, and we look at the history of the animal. Mm. We look at uh, some of them, for example, the ram, the bigger ram, I think we will... Uh, the inside. Yes. Mm. Then you'd get us the ram. Mm. Is a sire of uh, the top champion in 2020. Wow, that's good. So the world champion in 2020. Mm. So when we get such kind of breeding stock mm. and we have some good quality ewes, mm. then obviously we it means that we're going to progress and get high quality animals that gain weight, as I said, at half the time. Okay. Some other question I want to, to I want you I want you to explain us um, is the Ugandans, most of Ugandans, mm -hmm. we are new to zero grazing our animals. We don't have any idea. And to my shock, most of the feeds you feed here, I use here, you explain they are good from Uganda, right? Yes. So how would you pull it off to be able to feed these animals? Doesn't also the cost enter into your profit margin? How do you explain on zero grazing? How do you do it? Thank you. Mm. Thank you very much. For, for, our, for our case here, we make sure that we produce bomarots because the main feed for zero grazing is uh, bomarots, silage, okay. and then sheep meal. Mm. For sheep meal, we also plant our own maize. Mm. Then we get um, the proteins from uh, Uganda. Uganda. Which, which proteins are those? We get, uh, uh, we get canola, we get soya from Uganda, we get sun, sunflower wow. from Uganda. Mm. All those, because it's, it's cheaper getting it's them. Cheaper. You can't imagine. Yeah. And Ugandans are not aware that they have all these in Uganda. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, 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 and that has actually helped us a lot because once we've grown, for example, the cubs, once, once we have uh, our own maize, we can then just meal. And I think Elliot will demonstrate for us. He, he's going to do a small meal. Mm. And uh, we, we mixed actually yesterday. Mm. So we, we normally buy uh, sunflower, canola, cotton, all those from Uganda. Mm. And then we then, because it's a small percentage, it's around 18, 18 15 to 18 percent of uh, the cost component of the farm. You have, we produce our own bomarots. Mm. You have so questions. we make sure that we grow bomarots mm. and uh, we grow silage. Okay. And you can see the bales of silage. I think you, first it's important the, that we, first show, the, the we show the bales of silage, all uh, those that are, all that those are covered. From this side? Come, uh, yes. come close. And cover for the sound. Come close for the sound. Yeah. Yes. Yes, uh, so what where are the questions? Huh. Okay. Hunt to again, there is hey, sound. Hey, sound. Hmm. Uh, Will you hear the sound? Okay. And this is very high quality silage. Wow. So what is inside? That is maize? Yes. Stop and what? This is, this is maize, the whole from the top, the grain. Mm. Uh, so this is pure silage. Mm. 
high quality silage. And most of it, the, the variety that we use, for example, is called a DK777 mm. from a company called Bayer. Mm. That one was a double copper. So how do you compress it so that there is no air? How do you do that? Do you use a machine or it is... Uh, there, there's a machine. The machine that compresses all that, eh? Yes. It does some beautiful work. Eh? Very beautiful mm, work. It's beautiful. And, and, and uh, it's not so expensive. Mm. So the reason we prefer this way mm. is um, I'm able to control the feeds mm. and how the, uh, my farm hand is using Okay. And how the animals are feeding as well. Because mm. each one of them is 100 kilos. Oh. And that 100 kilos... Mm. Can feed how many sheep? We do two of them in a day. In a so day. 200 kgs oh. per day. Mm. Then we add, of course, uh, a 50% protein. Uh, ratio for... No, no, no. Oh. For protein, it's two kilos oh. per animal. 100 grams oh. per animal per day. Oh. So it's so cheap, by the way. Mm, I see. And the we big, have all this in Uganda. The big component mm. is uh, bomarots that mm. we use um, for ba two bags as well mm. per day mm. for, for our 60 animals for this group. 30-30. Mm. So two bags. Which, which is two bags by 15 kilos by 30, 60 kilos mm. of bomarots. Yeah. Which is only four bales mm. for 60 animals. Mm. And this one and a half to two at most, the same. So we mix the two. Then we add 100 grams of sheep meal per animal per day at Lipidum. Okay. And That's in some cases, we even skip. Oh. We even skip because it's not... Uh, once you have high quality material, then the rest it's not it's not so expensive. Okay. Uh, let me ask something. There is a question that keeps popping up. In Uganda, most of our sheep have uh, tails. This is somebody is asking for the third time. How come your sheep do not have tails? We dock them. That is docking. Yes. How do you go about it, and what treatment do they fall sick when after cutting the sheep, the tails? And what are the advantages? Why do you prefer to cut the? Thank you very much. Mm. We prefer to dock mm. because then it gives the animal, uh, the fat will now, because if, if it's not docked, the fat will go to the tail. Mm. But when you dock it well, mm. obviously the, the, the beauty and the appeal comes well, mm. but then it starts so storing the fat uh, in, in, the, in the legs. Mm. So with that, you have some good muscle and some very good fat, mm. and that is how now you get the weight coming back to the, the full sheep across the, 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 the body of, uh, mm -hmm. of the animal. Mm. So we normally dock at two weeks, but before dogging, mm. we do tetanus. Uh, Give a tetanus shot. Yes, you do a tetanus shot. Mm. Then uh, three days after that, we come in and, and dock. Docking, mm. uh, using the rubber ring. Use the rubber ring. Eh? Yes. In my village, they get a, a hot iron like charcoal. Yes. They put a panga, the panga, they put it in the hot fire. And then they just, they just yes. And then it seals there, and then there is no blood sealed, mm -hmm. and it heals. That's all. No treatment. Th yeah. That works, if, but we recommend you do that. Uh, well. Yeah, Before that ra rubber that. would be ideal. It is safer. Yes. Any other mm. questions? Uh, which, system which system of management are you using? Is it not zero grazing? Yeah, we do zero grazing. It is zero grazing. Yes, and um, we have an app that manages the sheep. Maybe uh. they're asking about the app. Yeah, we the have app. A, eh? a app mm. called Sheep, sheep App. Mm. But um, we do, we have the number of calls, you see the ear tags. Mm. And we can follow the animal from the time they lump, from the treatments that are coming in. Mm. And then obviously, with this kind of zero grazing, it's easier to manage, and you can see the cameras all over. Mm. So wherever I am, mm. I'm able to actually monitor the progress of the farm. I think you come here, they're saying the sound is poor. Somebody's saying, uh, somebody's asking, does that farmer break even on zero grazing? I think you come here. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Do you break even on zero grazing? Thank you very much. I actually make uh, uh, profits. I, I think since I started, I've, I've, I've never made a loss. Okay, that's good. Because with Dopa sheep, especially if you're on quality breeding stock, you're going to make money. Okay. Yes. Uh, how many times do sheep give birth in a year? Thank you very much. The sheep gives birth three times in two years. If you, you can still rush it and make sure that they give they lump down mm. twice in a, twice in a year, but that would then stress the mother because you need to allow time for the mother to heal and, to also heal also and to, gain after nursing and the also baby. To look after the baby. Yes. Yeah. So because what happens is the gestation period is five months. After five months, they are supposed to nurse the lambs for three months. 
after three months, you're not going to serve immediately. You're going to give it an extra one month to make sure that you gain, they regain their body uh, condition. There's something called BCS. BCS is body condition score. Okay. If your animal has a low body condition score and you serve, chances are they labote or they will give uh, underweight lumps. They'll give back to underweight lumps uh, in the subsequent lumping, lumping. So normally you make sure that you use that one month to pump in more proteins. We increase the ratio of feeds that you're going to give the animal. And most importantly, all place that your animals can graze, they need a lot of vitamins and you can get green grass, particularly kikuyu grass, uh, you can, op you can uh, bob, uh, what do you call, napier grass, and the new variety called super napier bakchong. Okay. So if you can give anything green in that one period, that one month period before you bring in the lamb, then you're going to succeed. Okay. And then there's also the, 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 the other issue. Our animals, do not, you do not wake up and get a lamb at your farm. We plan, we know when we're expecting lambs. These are planned sheep, eh? Yes. Mm -hmm. You do not just wake up one morning and you find 10 animals have given birth. Two weeks later, another 10 are giving birth. No. That's a, you follow a breeding cycle. Yes, we mm. follow our a strict breeding program here. How do you go about that breeding cycle? You see these partitions? Mm. You show them the partitions? Show, show them the partitions. Mm. Just uh, You can just, uh, yes, this way. We do lambs, uh, the rams to stay here unless it's season. Mm. So like now, you see this ram mm. is here serving 40 animals. So that means in the next five months, all the 40, we will be receiving 40 lambs. Then once the sections, we started this uh, two, two months ago, mm. but we're adding two sections for, if you're on zero grazing, you need to have five sections. Yeah, okay. One section for nursing, mm. we call them the maternity section. One section for the open use, one section for mature rams, one section for winner ewes, the ones that are not yet ready to be served, mm. and one section for winner rams. Okay. Because if, if you mix them, mm. they, they are ready for reproduction at five months. Mm. They can give birth. Mm. Uh, uh, they can get pregnant from the fifth uh, month. But okay. let's, if let's... you serve them, you'll have a challenge. So you okay. need to allow them that kind of spacing. Okay, we have quite a number of questions. How somebody's asking you, so where did you is asking, how much is a kilogram of your feed? How Thank much you. a kilogram of your feed? Mm. Uh, I think I haven't really calculated Quite. well. Mm. Uh, I need to work on that, but what I do, for example, I can mm. tell you my cost of production. Mm. Uh, I use uh, to feed 200 rams, because it's not the only farm that I have. Mm. There's the other farm on the other end. Mm. To feed 200 animals, I I use uh, five hundred thousand Kenya shillings for feed production from Boma Roads mm. to Belling, everything else. Those two hundred ewes combined will give birth to each, mm. even without counting the la, the the, um, the twins. Mm. You get two hundred at least minimum. Yes, mm. to get that, then. It Uh, we have uh, just a few questions. How do you, do, I think this one is for me. How do you choose the local animals to breed since Dopa sheep is a bigger animal? Usually what happens, we are only going to breed the sheep that have uh, over one year, one year, one year, one year, one year old and above. Less than that, we don't give these males to mate with them because they will break them, they'll not be able. To mate actually if at all they are able to mate it means giving birth to a bigger lamb will be hard for our local sheep so what we are doing we only bring these rams to mate with uh, the local sheep of one year and a half so for those of you who are watching me now what is the gestation, gestation period of a sheep is it four months gestation period of a sheep five five months 150 days 150 just like goats yes okay yes yeah but what i should tell you about the sheep 
that they are easy to maintain, they are easy to grow, they are easy to keep, they are cheap on everything and they multiply fast. They don't require lots and lots of your money. We are going to break off for now, but there are going to be other episodes where we have recorded for you. Please don't forget to tune in and check out what we have to you. We have to have to, we have to, what we have for you in relation to dopa ship that we are getting from Keyboys Breeders. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Uh,